All right, let's try to finish this up. We don't have that much to do. I'm going to give you an assignment. I'm going to help you with a few of the problems. I'm going to take one or two problems from each little section of this. I am not going to give you the whole time to work on the assignment in class. The other day did not work out. So I've learned my lesson, and we're not going to do that anymore. So sorry for those who actually get your homework done when I ask you to do it in class. But too many people are not doing it, so we're going to try something different. All right? So you're just going to have to sit and watch and listen to me the whole period. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, let's get this. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's do example nine. I'm not going to review anything. It was all pretty basic stuff. This one's a little bit longer. This one's a little more difficult. So, um, and this is the, well, it's the next to last one. I've actually skipped example 10, so we're going to go 9, then 11. All right, so I think in the book they use P and Q. I don't like using P and Q. I hate writing those, especially the Q, so I'm going to write X and Y instead of P and Q. So if you look in the book, you won't see X and Y, but I'm going to write it X and Y. Now look at this. Oops, it's not a plus Y. It's a plus 2Y. So this is a little different. What's different about this? What, looking at this, I mean, you got binomials. We multiplied binomials yesterday, but we multiplied how many binomials together? Just two of them. This time we have how many? We have three. I hope everybody's awake, heads up, watching what's going on. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're not going to multiply all three at the same time. That's too complicated. So what we're going to do is take two of them. We're going to multiply them together. Then we're going to take that and multiply it by the third one. So for instance, if what if I ask you to multiply two times three times five, let's say, all right? If I was gonna ask you to multiply these together, really in your head, you're really not doing all three at the same time. Even though this is a pretty easy problem, you can probably look at it and do it in your head. But what do you do mentally? You usually do what? Two times three, right? Or what? Two times five or three times five. It doesn't matter, does it, all right? Tell you the truth, it might be easier if we go two times five, but it doesn't make any difference. So what's two times five? That's 10. So we get two of them. Once we get two of them, then we can multiply it by the last one, 10 times three, and that gives you 30. Any way you do it, it'll work. Look, I could, I could, I could have gone, if I could talk, I could have gone two times three, which is what? Six times five is 30, or I could have done what? I could have done the three times five first, right? That gives me what? 15 and then take that 15 and multiply it by 2 and that gives me 30. Everybody see that? It's kind of the same thing. So we're not going to do all three at the same time. We're going to do two of them and then once we get the answer to that, then we're going to multiply it by the third one. Everybody with me? All right. So I decided, we'll do it the way that I did it on my notes. You can do it in any of these ways, but here's how I did it. I took these and multiplied them together. I got my answer, and then I took this x plus y, then multiplied it by the x, by this answer right here, okay? So it's kind of like doing this. It's kind of like I took the three times the five, got the 15, and then multiplied by the two. So this is kind of like my three and my five, multiply them together. Once I get that answer, I'm gonna multiply it by this, which was kind of like my two over here, yes? All right, so let's do it. So this thing right here, don't let the bracket fool you. A bracket is just a symbol that means the same thing as a parentheses, all right? It's just so that we don't put a ton of parentheses around there, all right? So if you got like a, you know, a whole bunch of parentheses, so for instance, if I, um, oops, let's get rid of this like this. Watch, you could have done this. You could have grouped it like that. But then if you do that too much, there's too many parentheses, it gets too confusing. So math people usually go parentheses first, and then they do brackets second. It doesn't really mean anything different. It means the same thing. It just groups things together. Everybody good with that? All right, so I'm just going to keep this x plus y out here so I don't forget about it. And now what I want to do is I want to multiply these together right here. So how do you multiply these two binomials together? Use the what method? Yeah, it's distributive property, but yesterday we talked about the FOIL method, okay? But FOIL method is distributive property, so absolutely, it's distributed. So we're going to take, we'll do first, 
So I'm going to put a parenthesis right here, and then I'm going to figure out what all this is. I'm going to stick it in that parenthesis. You could have put a bracket here, but usually when we're done with the bracket, we go to parentheses. All right, so here we go. 2x times x, what's that? 2 what? x, x squared, right, because x times x is x squared. All right, that's the first. Now we do the outside. Remember, FOIL, F-O-I-L, outside is next. So it's 2x times 2y. Well, I can multiply 2 times 2. By the way, what's the sign going to be? That's positive 2y, or 2x, and this is positive 2y, so we put plus. Always put your sign there. That's the first thing you should do. Then we go 2 times 2, which is 4, x times y. What's the only way to write x times y? Just xy. Just stick them next to each other. Don't even have to put a dot in the middle to show multiplication. You just put xy. All right? Right here. Let's do the inside. It's a negative times a positive, which is a negative. All right? And it's y times x. Now, you could put yx, but normally, just to keep things nice and neat and in order, usually we put them in alphabetical order. Do you absolutely have to? No, you don't have to, but I think it's a lot easier. So instead of yx, I'm going to write xy. That's the inside. Now we do the last. This one times this one. Again, it's a negative times a positive. What's negative times positive? It's negative, so put a minus right there. And then it's y times 2y. Well, you got a 2, y times y y squared. Okay? So that's, so far, what we've done today is basically what we learned yesterday. But we're not quite finished this parentheses, are we? I am not going to take this x plus y and distribute it through this big old parentheses right here. I want to simplify that parentheses. Why is this not simplified? What's wrong with this? Why, why isn't it good the way it is? It's not like, right, it's, we got to add our like terms, right? Add our like terms. And when I say add our like terms, subtraction's kind of included in that, all right? Because subtraction is just adding a negative, right? So when I say add like terms, I mean subtract as well, all right? Uh, let's just keep this x plus y. I haven't even messed with this part yet, so we're just going to keep it there so we don't forget about it. Put a parentheses, and then we just write down, I can't add anything to the x squared. There's no x squareds in here, so I just write 2x squared. But I can do this part right here. It's 4xy minus, how many xy's do we have here? One. Minus 1. So basically, it's just 4 minus 1. What's 4 minus 1? It's positive 3. 3 what? 3xy. Three All right, minus 2y squared. Now I'm ready to take this and distribute it. This is not technically FOIL, because you only use FOIL method when you have a binomial times a binomial. Okay, it's still distributive property though. So I'll do the little arrow things if that helps. After a while, you shouldn't have to do those things, but I'll do it for right now. So watch, I'm gonna take this x, multiply it by that, multiply it by this, and then multiply it by this. So let's do that first, all right? So x times two x squared. Well, it's two x, what? This is x to the first, x squared is x cubed, because you add the exponents, remember that? When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. All right, plus three, and then x times x, which is x squared, and then y, minus, um, take that x again, times this, so we got a two, and then you just chuck the x out in front. I just like it in alphabetical order. I could have written y squared x, it just looks a lot nicer if I write x y squared, okay? So that was the x, I distributed that. Let's move this down a little bit so I can put some arrows. All right, there we go. All right, now let's do the y. So let's multiply the y through everything. And again, after a while, you should kind of wean yourself off of these little arrow things. If it helps at first, feel free to do them, okay? You can do them forever if you wanted to. But after a while, it's just kind of a Waste of time, waste of space. All right, so here we go. Let's do the y's. So it's positive y times 2x squared. So it's plus 2. And again, alphabetical order, I'm going to put x squared y. Then we take the y, we multiply it by this one. They're both positive, so I put plus 3x. It's y times y, which is y squared. Now I take this y and multiply it by this. It's a positive y times a negative 2, which is negative 2. 
and then there's no x's, so it's just going to be y what? Y to the third, y cubed. So we're done our multiplication. Now all we have to do is basically what we did earlier is look to see if there's any like terms. If there's any like terms, let's add them up and let's write them down. So let's start with the first one. Remember, we always try to go in descending order. What does that mean, descending order? Go from the highest what? The highest power down to the lowest, all right? So x cubed is the highest and it's the x. And plus it's kind of in order anyway. So are there any other x cubes? Nope, there's a y cube, but there's no x cube. So I'm just going to write it down. There's nothing I can do with that. Since there's so many of these things, once I'm done with them, I like to mark them out. All right? Anybody do that? I like to do that. I've been doing that since I've been teaching this stuff. Look at this one. This is x squared y. Is there any other x squared y's? This one right here. Is there any other? Nope, just these two right here. So what do I got here? I got a positive 3, positive 2. How many is that all together? positive 5, and then you just write the term down, x squared y. Done with that, done with that. All right, let's look at the next one. I got a 2xy to the second. Okay, so xy squared. Is this one xy squared? Absolutely. This is negative 2. It's not a 2. It's a negative 2 plus 3. What's negative 2 plus 3? It's a positive 1. So put a plus. Do you really need the 1 there, though? You don't have to. If you did, it wouldn't be wrong. But I'm just going to leave it like this. Just a little neater without the one there. So I'm done with this one, done with this one. This is the only thing else left. So I'm going to write minus 2y cubed. You could have this in any order. If you want to put the cubes together, you could have gone 2x cubed minus 2y cubed and then write the rest. But there's no reason to. Let's just leave it like this. And that's how we do it. So it's a little more, more involved. It's, like, it's almost like doing two or three problems, right, in one. So it's definitely a little bit more involved than what we've done, but the process isn't any different. We did FOIL method, distributive property. We added like terms. Then we did distributive property again. Then we added like terms. And then boom, we got our answer. That's as easy as that. I mean, it's a little bit involved, a little tedious, but that's good. Everybody okay with that? All right, the next one. <laughs> the next one, there's one part of it anyway that's a little bit strange. Wow, there's a couple parts of it. They're a little bit strange. But hopefully, we'll get it figured out. All right. Everybody got that down? Everybody good with that? All right, so let's do this. Now, these are things, we're going to multiply things that are not polynomials. We've multiplied polynomials before, but if you remember the very first lesson when we did polynomials, we said stuff like this was not a polynomial, like a negative exponent. That's not a polynomial. If I have 1 over y, if that's part of my thing, that's not a polynomial. All right? Everybody with me on that? Remember that stuff? So if you go back and look to see which ones were not polynomials, you'll see a list of several things that are not polynomials. So we're actually going to, we can still multiply things that are not polynomials, but it gets a little bit weird a couple times here. It's just somebody somewhere sometime said, hey, these are not going to be polynomials. So anything with a negative exponent is not going to be polynomial. Um, anything that's division is not going to be a polynomial. Right? I don't really know like why they decided it, but that's what they decided, and we just kind of go along with it. right? Because if everybody made up their own rules, then everybody would be doing things differently. Um, so we got to have like a standard, and that's the standard. All right, here we go. We skipped example 10, so this is example 11. All right, here it goes. It might look a little scary at first, but there's one particular rule. Actually, I think we only apply it one time. Well, there's two things I don't think we've talked about much or at all in here that's going to happen to this. But let's start off pretending we haven't learned anything new about this. What are we going to do? Well, we got to, Now, I was going to say they're binomials, but technically, by the letter of the law, they're not binomials, right? But there are two things, right? I got two things here with a plus in between. I got two things here with a minus in between. 
So technically they're not bi binomials, but we can still do the math like they were. So what do we do? We do FOIL method, right? So I'm gonna multiply the first one and the first one. So I multiply those together. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm not gonna just do it in my head. I'm gonna write down them being multiplied. I'm gonna put them like next to each other. I'll show you. So this is gonna be x to the negative second times x to the what? Positive second. I'll show you why in a second, why I'm writing it down like this. I'm trying to help you. I don't know, maybe some people it's not helpful because it's doing a little bit extra stuff, but I think it could be helpful, all right? So I did the first, let's do the outside. Let's do these two together. So they're both, po uh, actually they're not both positive. This is positive, this is negative, so I put a minus. That's the first thing you need to do is make sure you get the right sign here. And then what do I do? I write x to the negative second and then y to the negative second. We'll talk about what a negative exponent is towards the end of this, okay? Just not right now. Now let's do the inside. So we did first outside, this is the inside. Again, which way are we gonna write first? Are we gonna put the y first or the x first? The x, they're both positive, right? Positive y, positive x squared. So we put plus, and so we're gonna put the x first, so x squared y. Everybody should be with me so far, right? Nothing new, nothing big deal. And now let's do the last, these two right here. So look at the sign, positive, negative, it's gonna give me a negative. They're both y's, so this is gonna be y to the what? What's the exponent to this y? It's a one, y to the first, okay? It will be in a second. We're, I just wanna do this out so we can see what's going on. And this is gonna be what? y to the negative second. Now after a while, after a very short while, you should be able to have figured out what that first one was in your head. And you should have been able to figure this one out in your head. I know some of you probably already have. But the reason I wrote them out is just so I don't confuse everybody. And you're like, where, where'd that zero come from? Where'd that negative one come from? Okay, this is where it came from. This is why I'm doing it like this. So if you're doing this on a homework or a quiz or a test, this step right here, you don't really need to write that entire step out, okay? Like these two next to each other, these two next to each other. But what I'm gonna do is I gotta figure out what this is. So if I'm gonna multiply those two things together, I keep the base the same, and then I add the exponents. What do I get when I add the exponents? This is where it gets a little weird. It's a zero. It's negative two plus two. Everybody see it? I just add them up. Negative two plus two is zero. We're gonna talk about what x to the zero is in a minute. All right, let's just do the rest of it. Um, what about this? Can I do anything with that and this? Do these combine? Do these have like terms with anything? Nope, so I'm just gonna write it the way it is. I'm gonna change it in the next step, but right now I'm just gonna write it the way it is. Actually, I'm gonna write everything, well, except for this one. So we are gonna simplify a couple things. So this one, you can't really mess with that, so I just leave it like this. This one, put minus. Let's do the same step as we did on the first one with the x's. I got y the first, y the negative second. What do I do with the exponents right here? Add them together. It's one plus negative two. What's one plus negative two? It's negative one, so that's my exponent. So this is y to the negative first power. Everybody good? Okay, let's take a brief pause, okay? And this is just off to the side stuff. I wanna show you something that you probably learned in Algebra 2, if you were in Algebra 2 you probably learned a little bit about negative exponents. I don't think we did it in here. Have we done negative exponents in here? We did We did do it? Okay, good. We did? Okay, I can't remember. So if I can't remember, you probably can't remember, all right, except for a couple of you. Um, but I'm gonna show you what negative exponents mean. So if I had like x to the negative first, okay, what does that mean? What do I do? A lot of times in math books, they're gonna tell you to simplify the problem, I don't want negative exponents, all right? So let's just pretend I don't want any negative exponents. So what does this mean? Well, watch. Everybody watching? You could take anything and divide it by one, couldn't you? Think of any number in the world. 17 divided by one is what? 17. 1,054 divided by one is 1,054. Agreed? All right. Same thing with multiplying by one. Would you agree with that? You can multiply everything by one, okay? Everybody with me so far? Except for all the people that have their head on the desk? 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we wanna change this from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. Well, I'm not just gonna go here and say, okay, boom, it's changed, it's positive. Well, x to the negative first and x to the positive first, you'd probably figure are not the same thing, would you agree? So what we do, in order to change it to a positive exponent, we take that whole thing and we do what, Christian? Give me the word. Flip it, thank you. We flip it to the bottom, all right? So if I flip it to the bottom, I'm just gonna push this over a little bit. What happens is it leaves the top, it comes to the bottom, and you gotta change something. What do you think you're gonna change? The exponent, the negative to the exponent, right. So instead of negative one, it's gonna be what? Positive one. So we've gotten rid of it from the top because we flipped it, right? So we actually took it, picked it up, threw it to the bottom, but then when we did that, we have to change the sign of the exponent. Write a pass. Okay, so now what are we left with? I know this looks messy, but we'll do it a couple times without all the mess, okay? I'm just showing you like every little thing here. So if this left and went to the bottom, what's still on the top though? A one, you see that one right there? So we still have a one on the top. It's not like nothing is on the top, all right? So we have a one on the top, where did I put my pen? Oh, here it is. All right. So we have a one on the top. What's on the bottom now? It's a, a y? What? Yeah, it's one times x to the first. What's the easiest way to write that? It's just x. No? It's just one times x to the first. One time x to the first is just x. One times x is x, all right? So it's one over x. So let me rewrite it. So x to the negative first is equal to what? One over x. Everybody see that? Let's do a couple more. Let's put some numbers in here. What if I said three to the negative first? What's three to the negative first equal to? It's one over three, exactly right. Watch this, this is weird. What if I put one over three to the negative first? Flip it to the top this time, that's right, and then change the sign. So what's that gonna equal? It's just three over one, or just three. You see that? What if I, run it out of room here, what if I had this? What if I had um, x to the negative second, y to the third, over x to the fourth, y to the negative fifth? <laughs> All right, now we're getting somewhere. That's probably a little bit more involved than what we're doing right here. But uh, since we're talking about it, I figured we would do it. So what are you gonna do first of all? Look for the ones that have negative exponents. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we could take this, flip it to the bottom, then it's gonna be x to the what? It's gonna be x squared, x to the second, that's right. Then which, what, and it's done there, right? We're done with that. What's gonna, what else are we gonna do? Take this y to the negative fifth and bring it to the top and what's that going to become? Y to the what? Y, well, no. It's going to be Y to the positive fifth, right? It was negative. When you flip it, you change the sign of the exponent. And we're done with that. Now, it's kind of messy, but what do we have left? I got Y cubed, Y to the fifth. What's that going to be? Y to the eighth. And what's this going to be? No, it's X to the sixth, okay? That's how you would do something like that. It does, but that's okay. I said it. Yes, sir. Not when they're different bases, okay? And you, we even wouldn't do that if they were the same base, okay? Watch, good question. This really isn't gonna involve this problem right here, but it's a good question, watch. What if it was x to the eighth over x to the sixth? What's that equal to? It's x to the second, because think about what's going on. I got eight x's on the top, right? I got six x's on the bottom. I could write them all out, I'm not going to. I could write them all out, but what will happen? Six of these X's cancels with what? Six of these X's, right? So how many do you have left over? You got two. So you could look at that way. That's an okay way to look at it, right? I teach that all the time. Or you could look at the exponents. What did you do to eight and the six to get a two? You subtracted, you just went eight minus six. Okay, so eight minus six is two, so it's just X to the second, all right? That's 
That's something that we teach all the time, all right? But you can't do it here. You can't make this because this is different bases, right? That's a Y, that's an X. There's nothing else you can do to this, okay? All right, let's go back to this. All that said, well, let me do one more thing. Oh my goodness. So many things we gotta go back in time and cover. Watch this. What if I said, um, since we know about negative exponents now, watch this. What if I said X to the second, I'm sorry, X to the second times X to the negative second. What is that? It's, it's this, isn't it? Okay, it's X to the zero, but I wanna show you something. What if we wanted to change that to a positive exponent? What would I do with this? Flip it to the bottom, correct? It leaves here, it comes here. Now, I've got what? X squared over X squared. What's X squared over X squared? Is it? It's one. It's one. Anything divided by itself is one, okay? So check this out. Remember we said before, x to the negative second times x to the second is x to the zero. So what is x to the zero? It's equal to one. And that's the reason why, okay? The reason why is because of this right here. Didn't you see me shake your head at you? I thought you made eye contact with you and I thought we understood each other, but you still did it again. Why do you gotta make me say something? It would have been so much easier if you would have just said, okay, I, I think I know what he's asking me to do. All right, so let's take a look at this. What is x to the zero? It's one, so I'm gonna put a one there. Now this right here, we wanna write our answers so we don't have any negative exponents. So what in the world am I gonna to do to this so I don't have any negative exponents. I don't want this negative two. I don't want this negative, put a minus. You're gonna flip it, that's right. So if I flip it to the bottom, what's left on the top? A one. And if I flip it to the bottom, I get x squared and y squared. You with me? Why isn't it not a two over there? There's two variables there. Because I just take, I just took this one and I flipped it and I took this one. Right, because this whole thing, watch, if I do it over here, x to the negative second, y to the negative second, it's over one, right? So I took this and I flipped it, and I took this and I flipped it. And I just multiply by a one, which you don't really put the one there now, okay? But I needed the one up here though, didn't I? All right, because I, I can't leave nothing on the top, all right? What about this one? Can we simplify that? What do you know? Here we go. Do you have to do anything to this? No, I got all positive exponents. There are no like terms that I can add to anything. So I just keep it like this. One more thing I can simplify. Why is that not simplified? It's because you got a negative exponent. So what are you gonna do? Put a minus, for, don't forget that, put the minus. And remember, this is over one, right? So what do we do? We take it and flip it to the bottom. I'll tell you what, let's get rid of this. It just gets in the way. So we flip it to the bottom and we make it y to the first, or just y. What's left on top? It's one. This crazy looking answer is your answer, and it's your simplified answer. Can we not put an x in front of that y? No, there's no x here. There's no x you know, that's being multiplied by it, so there's no x in front of it. I told you it was a little weird, didn't I? Okay, it is. But after you get used to it, and you know the rules, right? You gotta know the x to the zero rule. You gotta know the negative exponent rule, right? Flip it and all that kind of stuff. Now, some books will, um, when I, I kept saying today, like if somebody was ever gonna listen to this lesson, a, math, a real math teacher, <laughs> and they were gonna listen to this lesson, they would probably have a little bit of problem with me saying that this is simplified. Technically, Changing this to a positive exponent technically is not simplifying it, okay? It's simplified right now. But what you have to do is look at the instructions. If you look at the instructions to the problem, a lot of times it'll say, make all the exponents positive exponents, okay? So that's what you do. A lot of times you do that. I used to teach out of a book a long time ago that kind of gave you problems like this, 
Remember this first problem that we did? x to the negative second, y cubed over, what was it? x to the fourth, y to the negative fifth. There were some books that said, okay, let's put everything, simplify this, but put everything in the, in the numerator. So that means you do what? You would take this, flip it to the top. You would take this and flip it to the top. Make sense? It just depends on your instructions, all right? Sometimes they would say, put your answer so everything's in the denominator. So how would you do that? You would take this, flip it, take this, flip it. Sometimes they'd say, make them all positive exponents. That's what we did. And then what do you think the other option would be? Make everything negative exponents, all right? So how would I make everything negative exponents? Well, I would take the positive and flip that one, right? Then I would take this positive and flip this one. So when I say we're simplifying it, it's just our version of saying, make sure everything's a positive exponent. We good? Okay. Oh, I got one more. I thought that was my last one. Let's do one more. We'll do it kind of faster. This is really kind of weird because we're used to having exponents to be like regular numbers, like 2 and 3 and stuff like that. But this time they're going to make them letters. All right, so this is example 12. So here we go. But the rules are the same. Nothing's really changed. It's just going to look strange. It's going to look weird. Plus. Okay. I got five minutes to do this. You ready? So give me one word that we're going to do first. What's our first thing we're going to do? Foil, okay? Or distribute. Either one of those words would have worked, okay? So let's do it. Let's multiply this times this. So what do I do when I multiply with bases and exponents? I keep the base the same, and what do I do to the exponents? I add them. What's n plus n? It's 2n. Normally, well, on my notes, I wrote down like x to the nth times x to the nth, but let's just do it in our head because we're running out of time. Let's do the next one. Let's drop this down just a little. Okay, let's multiply this one and this one. So there's a one in front, right? They're both positive, so put plus. Everything's positive, so everything's gonna be plus. So I've got one times three is what? Three. Now watch this, I got x to the neg positive n and x to the negative n. So my base is gonna be x. What's my exponent gonna be? What do I do with the exponents? I add them up. What's n plus negative n? It's zero, so this is gonna be x to the zero. We'll simplify that in a minute. All right, the rules are the same, right? They haven't changed. What's this? There's a one in front of it, so it's two times one is two. This is x to the what? One, so again, what do we do with the exponents? We keep the base the same, and we add the exponents. Now, what's our exponent? Our exponent is a one, and our exponent is a what? N. So how do I add one plus N? Just, no. One plus N is not equal to N. Yeah, one plus N, or N plus one. I think they write N plus one. Everybody see it? It's one plus N, right? You're adding the exponents. You got a one, you got an N. Don't know what that is, but you add them up, one plus N. But we're just gonna make it look a little nicer. Put the N first. And then we do the last. So let's do that. It's plus. Multiply the numbers. Two times three. That's six. Let's do the x's again. This is x to the first. This is x to the negative n. So I have to add them together. What's one plus one plus negative n? It's just one minus n. And in the book, and I agree with this, I would keep it one minus n. Because if I switched it around, what would it look like? It would look like negative n plus one, and normally we don't like the negative out in front like this, okay? So one minus n is a little nicer way to write it. If you put negative n plus one, it would be fine. I wouldn't have any trouble with that. I wouldn't have any problem with that at all, okay? Now, what do you think we can do? Are there any like terms? Nah, because this has to the two n, this has to the n plus one, this has to the n, or to the one minus n power. So they're not like terms. What's the only thing I can do to simplify this? Make this x to the zero into a what? One. So three times one is three. So basically, you're just getting rid of this x to the zero, and that's your answer right there. 
Nope, because it's like a combination. It's one minus n. All right, this is how they want you to write it, just like this. That's right, because if n was negative 2, then it would be a positive, right? But it could be a negative, right? If this was 1 minus, or what did I say? Oh, negative 2, right. If it was like 1 minus 5, right, that would be a negative 4. But we just keep it like this, and that's how we do it. Little weird, little ugly, but it really tests our knowledge. This problem right here really tests if we know how to do the, the FOIL method, if we really know how to multiply things with the same base. All right, that really tests if we know how to do that stuff. All right? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll say no homework. Um, what we might do on Monday, because I don't want to go way too far because we still got to take a quiz. And the quiz is going to be up to the addition and subtraction. The quiz will not be this multiplication stuff. Everybody hear me? All right, so, um, so on Monday, again, I don't know if one of those ACSI people are going to come in here or not, but maybe we'll go over some of the problems from the homework, okay? So I'll get you started. But again, like I said earlier, there's no way I'm going to give you the whole period or half a period or five minutes to do anything on your own because I know nothing productive will get done for many of you. All right. So that's it. No homework for the weekend, um, but we will next week. So be ready for it next week, okay?